initially, uh, when we started this project, we never expected this uh, project uh, uh, would uh, gain uh, this high political support. Uh, because, you know, taxation is, has been considered as one of the most difficult areas uh, to achieve policy coordination. Because tax taxation itself is all about sovereignty. Uh, when UK hosted the G8 summit in uh, 2013, and Cameron set out the three T, trade, transparency and taxation. So BEPS has been one of the three main agendas uh, for the you know, head of states of uh, G8 countries to discuss uh, at the time. And uh, this uh, was a really good example uh, how we, uh, this project gained uh, this uh, you know, very strong uh, political support and that really helped us. In 2012, we proposed to the G20 to start working on the BEPS project, Base Erosion Profit Shifting, to limit the risk of tax avoidance by multinational companies. So the goal is to eliminate double taxation as per the OECD standard, but to stop facilitating double non-taxation. So it's about reintroducing more fairness and more sense to the international tax system. We first started, under the presidency of Massa, the uh, project by a few ideas. What should we do in the next five years? And uh, actually, quite quickly afterwards, there were some trouble in the UK with uh, uh, Starbucks and other companies uh, where people thought that they were not paying enough taxes and the G20 asked us to move faster. And that's where we proposed a comprehensive package of 15 measures and the 15 measures were about three main blocks one about creating new rules to eliminate this double non-taxation two fixing existing rules of international taxation like transfer pricing stop treaty shopping or the definition of the permanent establishment and finally we wanted to increase transparency that's the third block and about transparency it was about seeking new data to know better where multinational companies pay their taxes, but also improving the transparency of multinational companies to the tax administrations, and that's the country by country reporting. Finally, we had horizontal actions, like dealing with the tax challenges of the digital economy, but also building a multilateral instrument to make sure that the BEPS package would be faster to be implemented. As I mentioned, you know, BEPS itself started at OECD. When uh, we started BEPS, uh, we strongly felt uh, that it would be uh, useless uh, if we exclude, you know, uh, every you know e relevant emerging economies because uh, because you know in discussing what should be the new international rule under BEPS, uh, uh, it should be discussed and, dis and decided by everybody. Indeed, what was fascinating is that this project, which was born at a meeting next to Paris with only a few countries around the table. We asked them, what are your concerns? And they all said, we're concerned about base erosion and profit shifting. Base erosion, profit shifting, we decided to make it a brand and to launch this. We managed to introduce it in the communique of the G20 in Los Cabos, but nobody was paying much attention then. And it's only because there were a lot of interests from all the finance ministers meeting and all the summits meeting, tax has been on the agenda. Starting with Australia in 2014, there was a dedicated tax session. We also had a good discussion in Russia when the BEPS action plan was discussed and approved. And finally in Turkey in 2015, the adoption of uh, the action plan and all the measures by the G20 meeting. Yeah, based on the you know, G20 discussions uh, for a couple of years, we finally successfully you know, launched the uh, so-called final report, uh, BEPS recommendation in uh, 2015, right? This year, uh, under the presidency of Japan and given the prominent role played by uh, Massa as the G20 deputy, we again have tax pretty high on the agenda with big challenges related to what's next and that's this question about the digitalization of the economy.
Right now, uh, more than 120 countries? 28. 28 128. countries? 128, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we decided to participate in BEPS and we created uh, another, you know, uh, uh, forum, uh, which is called Inclusive Framework. And actually, the very first Inclusive Framework was held in Kyoto in 2016. We had the first big meeting. We had more than 100 delegations, if I remember well, in June 2016 in Kyoto for the launch of this Inclusive mm. Framework for BEPS implementation mm. and now it's about leveling the playing field. You have all the key players, the G20 countries, the G7 countries included in the G20, but you also have developing countries mm. which said we want to have a seat, we want to be at the table. And uh, we also have a number of jurisdictions which are no tax jurisdictions or, or, or we're facilitating BEPS which have now all committed to eliminate the features of their economy which mm. are facilitating BEPS. So it's about inclusivity mm. and it's about leveling the playing field. Mm. And I think we have a very good buy-in and also a lot of expectations that this body will be the body to discuss international tax matters on the way mm. forward. First is that, you know, implementation of BEPS package should not you know, uh, create uh, uh, conflict between uh, different tax systems of each country, right? Uh, secondly, interpretation of the uh, BEPS project should not encourage an you know, increased number of dispute uh, cases. And thirdly, as Pascal rightly mentioned, we should really secure a level playing field. And I, I do believe this inclusive framework consisting of 128 countries is a really good, you know, instrument to achieve those purposes. I think what Massa says on, on the dispute resolution or prevention is extremely important. We want to eliminate double taxation, not facilitating double non-taxation. Mm. We, we have all these aspects and the inclusivity on the top of that is aimed at ensuring that all the countries will play with the same rules and uh, will achieve the same goal. Uh, again, making sure that multinationals pay their taxes where the taxes are owed and mm. that's also true and even more true for mm. developing countries which are more exposed to corporate income tax than developed countries. The impact of the project was to make sure that multinational companies would pay their taxes where their activities are carried out and where their profits are made. At some point we talked about three thousand billion US dollars of accumulated profit in Bermuda and Cayman. So the goal of the project was to stop that and realign the location of the profit with value creation. First, uh, we have to really monitor uh, how implementation of each web participant countries are uh, doing. Uh, secondly, a couple of you know, things are still pending, including uh, digital taxation. Uh, when BEPS recommendation was issued, uh, we could agree on how value-added tax, VAT, uh, be imposed on e-commerce, but we could not reach agreement how uh, the, you know, the corporate taxation should be properly imposed. Uh, and we are supposed uh, to complete this discussion by 2020, according to the G20 agenda. And third one is, you know, of course, uh, technical assistance for developing countries. They need proper uh, technical assistance to implement uh, BEPS agreed package and so on. In this context, let me highlight the importance of so-called PCT, a Platform for Collaboration on Tax, which is a coordinating body among OECD, IMF, World Bank and UN for you know, a TA coordination. And they are now working on eight toolkits, including our toolkits on tax incentives. Uh, it was issued already in 2015. And also uh, toolkits on transfer pricing, uh, which was also issued in uh, 2017 and they are working on remaining uh, six toolkits uh, for actual uh, usage uh, by developing countries. So the big challenge today is tax and digital or tax and digitalization. Because in 2015, there was agreement uh, on Action 1 report that we could not ring fence a tax solution for digital because every, everything is digitalizing. But at that time, there was no agreement. Since then, big progress has been made. And today, there are a number of proposals to address the tax challenges of the digitalization of the economy. Pillar one is about a new nexus. When can you start taxing a company? 
In the previous world, it was about physical presence. It's about a fixed place of business, a permanent establishment. Today, you may not need a permanent establishment to do massive business in a jurisdiction. How do we need to reinvent the nexus? But if you reinvent the nexus, how much profit will you allocate to these markets? Everybody wants to discuss this. That's pillar one. And a number of countries also proposed a pillar two, which would be kind of putting in place a minimum tax. It's not about asking countries to have a minimum tax, but to protect oneself from profit shifting to a zero or low tax jurisdiction. There is a commitment to look for a solution by the end of 2020, and in particular, a commitment to develop a program of work which should lead us to probably a global revamp of international tax rules by the end of 2020. This year we, we have you know, a presidency for G20 and uh, this is one of the most important uh, you know, issues under uh, Japanese uh, presidency's uh, priorities. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we are supposed to complete this exercise by 2020, uh, but uh, we are under pressure uh, to expedite uh, this discussion on digital taxation as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, so we uh, uh, really uh, have to be sure that you know, uh, it, it should be really consensus based, but necessary professional input uh, is expected from OECD and G20. Exchange of information has been the other tax pillar of the G20 work. We started with exchange of information back in 2009 and then we moved to BEPS in 2012-2013. On exchange of information, massive progress has been made. We've moved from the world where bank secrecy was the rule in many countries. Uh, more than 50 countries and jurisdictions had bank secrecy, strict bank secrecy. It was very easy to hide your money offshore. And today this is no longer the case. Exchange of information has become the rule, including bank information. Countries are obliged to exchange information on request, but they are also now all committed and are implementing automatic exchange of information based on an OECD G20 standard. Today, all the banking information on non-residents is exchanged on an automatic basis. So millions of bank accounts owned by foreigners, by non-residents, have been exchanged by Switzerland, by Singapore, by Hong Kong, by all the countries across the world. And this is extremely important in terms of fighting for more justice, making sure that all the taxpayers would pay their taxes where the taxes are owed. What's next on that front? Making sure that it's properly implemented. We're confident that there is good implementation, but we will be organizing the peer review of automatic exchange of information.